I want to take this opportunity to welcome faculty, retired faculty, esteemed keynote speaker, Dr. Jan Hayekin, staff, family, friends, and all of our guests of honors, all these amazing nursing students. I am Dr. Karen McCauley, the School of Nursing Director, and truly honored to celebrate this rite of passage for our nursing students who are entering the nursing profession and the clinical portion of the curriculum. Each nursing student today will receive a pin and an ID badge holder for their white coats as a visual reminder of their professional oath to uphold and commit to keeping healthcare human and treat each patient with dignity and respect. The ceremony, once held only in medical schools, is now celebrated in many healthcare disciplines, including nursing, to support nursing's contributions to healthcare teams. Your new nursing role is not all about the tasks and skills you master, but most importantly, how you delicately nurture the uniqueness of your calling and role as a nurse by humbling yourself to deeply reflect and understand your moral responsibility of ethical conduct and maintaining the integrity of our profession. The true art of our practice is human connection realized through the spirit of caring, compassion, and empathy. How the art of nursing practice contributes to healing. Today, Dean Hooker, the Dean of the College and Health of Health and Human Services, is not able to join us, but he has recorded a very special message for you that we would like to play for you. Well, I'm really excited about this uh, ceremony for the students because it's a major step forward for the students in their professional careers. Uh, they're basically becoming a nurse now, uh, and they get to share this with their family and friends. Uh, it's a great achievement for them, and I'm excited to be a part of it. When my late wife Cindy and I moved here in uh, 2018, uh, she unfortunately had several health situations that landed her in, in the hospital several times. She was in acute care facilities, uh, emergency rooms, um, home health care uh, situations, and all along the way we ran into uh, SDSU alum from our nursing program. And those nurses were so professional, so skilled. Uh, they comforted us, they gave us confidence as a family uh, based on their compassionate care. And I was so grateful and also proud as a dean to see these alums out in the workforce uh, making a difference uh, in people's lives and they made a huge difference in my life. Due to the wonderful compassionate care that my wife and I received from all these nursing alum, uh, once she passed away, I thought it would be a great way to honor her by setting up the Cynthia J. Hooker Memorial Scholarship, which will give a $1,000 scholarship annually uh, to a nursing student. Um, so we're really excited, myself and my family, to set up that endowed scholarship to help our current students and future students uh, to get through their program and become the best nurses that they can be. I know of their character and the type of professional they're going to be because I know that they want to help people and that they're excited to do that. Um, and they're going to make a difference in people's lives. The nurses that I interacted with during that time with my late wife, they made a difference in not only her life, but in the life of myself and my family. And I'm so proud of those alum, but I'm also proud of these current students for the career they've chosen because they will indeed make a difference in people's lives and uh, they'll be very um, gratified and fulfilled in this profession uh, if they do half as well as the alum that I interacted with. I want to say congratulations to each and every student going through the white coat ceremony today. Congratulations also to family and friends. It's a great accomplishment that you're at this stage of your academic career. I wish you the very best for the remaining of your time here at San Diego State and I know that you'll make us proud. Congratulations.
Thank you, Dean Hooker. I am incredibly thankful and would like to introduce our esteemed keynote speaker, Dr. John Heineken. Since I've arrived at uh, San Diego State uh, five months ago, uh, she has been a loyal supporter and uh, inspirational and mentor for me. And I know she has been for many of you. She is one of our emer emeritus faculty and a former School of Nursing director. I'll please ask Jan to come forward, Dr. Heineken. Good morning. I'm sorry that all your friends and loved ones can't be here personally, but I think through the power of Zoom, probably those who want to be will, will be joining us. I'm happy about that. Um, it's been a while since I've done a a formal presentation. It's been a long while, so I'm crossing my fingers today. You, you can for me as well. Um, I know that this is a serious occasion and quite formal. And when I have something like that facing me, I kind of rally around and find people to support me. Well, this time who I found was not a person. It was our dog. Uh, Annie is a 11 month old Havanese, and I tried to explain to her that this is a serious ceremony, but she would have none of that. But she is constant in our lives. She's very sweet. She's spunky. And if you down the road find that you're in a rough patch and need a little extra love, I think we can manage, manage to have a, an appointment, you and Annie to get together. So Keep, keep that in mind as a possibility. But today is not about Annie, and it's not about me. It's about the transition you're making into the community of professional nursing. I'm so excited for you. I really am excited for you. I know you've worked very hard to get to this point, and in a few years, you will be at the point of graduation. But everyone in this room is a high achiever, and so I think you're going to do well. When you graduate, you're going to have some amazing choices about where to work and what kind of nursing practice you might want to uh, engage in. I mentioned today uh, a, a, to a colleague in Oregon about the ceremony, and she said, um, this is your time to serve when they're, you're going to be needed most. And she was speaking, of course, of the pandemic and how great an influence that has had in um, our country and our, and our health um, perspective. But I want to tell you that, yes, while it's, it's almost seductive to think that this is the time, throughout nursing's history, we have always been needed, and that will always be the case. You will have a position and one of real interest wherever you decide to practice. The baccalaureate program, <clears throat> ours, is almost 70 years old. And through the time that I've known it, and I was a graduate myself, um, this program has produced some fine, fine um, alumni, as you heard Dean Hooker allude, allude to. Um, I think the program is excellent at producing nurses for today as well as tomorrow. And I say that from the perspective of having taught at five different universities and having been a, a care provider on the East Coast and the West Coast and places in between. So where I have been in my clinical practice um, and my teaching, I have been observing. I've seen programs, I've seen students, I've seen faculty. And this program is excellent. And the quality of you all is excellent. So rest assured that you have really chosen a, a wonderful program. Many students from your program will go on to master's and doctoral work. Um, that may seem maybe a large step for you, but I think it's not too soon for you to think about the possibility that that's something you might want to 
do in the future. And opening up the doors with, through master program and doctoral program, what you'll find is you'll have many more opportunities in advanced practice, in areas of specialization, in nursing research, and um, in nursing education. I want to say a word about the oath you're going to take today. Uh, in more than 425 schools of nursing, and 99% of the schools of medicine in the United States, students are participating in a ceremony like this. And it's basically a common denominator, meaning uh, the reciting of, oath, of an oath has become a ritual. It's become a rite of passage and has been said before, it's a, it's a time when you're moving from a preclinical courses to solidly clinical courses. And uh, the, the schools that have also um, observed uh, white coat ceremonies included everything that we heard before, but also schools of occupational therapy, dentistry, pharmacy, and physician assist, assistant programs. They all have white coat ceremonies at this point. Ours is called San Diego State School of Nursing Student Oath of Professionalism. Now that's quite a mouthful. But the oath sets out responsibilities, role responsibilities and behaviors that you are expected to complete in the rest of your time here. Our very capable faculty, and we have a few here today, uh, are gonna be partners with you. And they're gonna help you with the art, master the art of, of um, healing, as well as the science of nursing. There, there is a blending of the two and they are expert at helping with that. If you are conscientious and good at setting priorities as well as meeting priorities, and if you use the faculty expertise that's available, we have every reason to believe you're gonna succeed in this program. During this pandemic, the media have shown a bright light on the nature of our work, the sacrifices nurses make, the sacrifices families make, and the public's appreciation for what we do. The public feels very highly about nurses and in fact, um, hold us in high esteem. We know this, because for the last 18 years, the Gallup opinion poll has, has um, rated nursing at the very top of everybody in all the professions. We are rated the best in terms of honesty and ethical practice. And so that's quite a, an honor to carry on. And you'll have that opportunity. Each of you will have the opportunity to enjoy and enhance that reputation and live up to it. And you'll have the opportunity to pay forward. So in the future, patients and staff and nurses, other nurses will have you know, the benefit from what you've left behind, your legacy, so, so to speak. So if you act um, accordingly and you show that you can be honored and trusted, then that's gonna live with you and go move on to other patients and uh, nurses that you interact with. In preparing for today's talk, I sent out questionnaires to several nursing faculty in schools of nursing in California and Oregon. Um, and I asked them to describe student behaviors and situations which stood out to them and made them proud to be nursing faculty. And yes, I got some interesting things back. The common threads running through all the examples that came back to me, and I'm only going to share, share four today, but all the common, common threads um, in terms of what um, nursing faculty highlight as the best attributes for nursing students include being assertive, being compassionate in what you do, being prepared for every single day you're in clinical, and being a strong patient advocate. Those are the gems they had to offer. As I read these examples, and I said, I'm only gonna do four, I would like it if you can kind of transform yourself, see if you can put yourself in these situations 
and think about how you might have behaved and what you might have said in these situations. Okay, the first example, and pardon me for just reading them. On a pediatric floor, a two-year-old was traumatized by loss of her parents in an auto accident. She wanted to be held constantly and she was herself injured. With compassion and kindness, the nursing students decided to work on this. They wanted to work this out. They stepped in to be her source of comfort for the shift. If one student had to do something for another patient, she passed that child off to a fellow student. And they literally took turns working as a compassion team, holding the child for the entire 12 hour shift. Okay. And I think as you think about that, that's something probably you could see yourself doing. But yet, this is kind of out of the pale. It was out of the ordinary. And that's why the nursing professor sent the, the exemplar to me. The next example on an in intensive care unit, which before the arrival of COVID had been considered an excellent teaching unit. Staff liked having students and affectionately referred to them as sponges because they soaked up information and they were fun to be around. But with the arrival of COVID with the epidemic, staff were drained from working because of the double shifts they were required to work. They also verbalized that they felt angry because there were patients they cared for that were unvaccinated. And so the instructor listening to what the um, nurses were telling them about the climate on the, on the unit, the nursing instructor went to the leadership team on that unit and said, I think we need to do something. I want this to be a good really learning experience for the students, but I'm not sure we've got that going for us right now. Together, the students and the instructor developed a plan to improve the work environment. And they initiated an all hands on deck approach that came to the aid of the staff. So yes, they were interested in the patients, but what they really saw was the staff needed help. Students took the responsibility for bathing, turning, feeding patients, became runners for the nurses who were taking care of COVID patients. Um, and they were ab absolutely an extra pair of hands for all the nurses on that unit that day. Students were publicly thanked. And for the remainder of the, the semester, that student group bonded very closely together, was seen always together, enjoyed one another's company and were very supportive like in post conferences. A third example, a vice president of a hospital sent a message throughout the hospital announcing the connectivity for all patient monitoring systems had crashed inside one of the hospital's main towers. Staff rely, as you know, staff rely on machines to provide constant monitoring in intense and intermediate care units. When the connections failed, without being asked, one of the nursing students stepped up beside a patient's bed and began to personally and continuously monitor that acutely ill patient. In the words of the hospital, that level of initiative, and I'm going to say assertiveness, that level of assertiveness was greatly appreciated by everybody on that unit that day. The fourth example I'm gonna give you, and I really haven't said where the other examples took place, but let me just say this, this was a San Diego State University nursing student. The student was assigned to the emergency department. And before that time, she had been in critical care. So the emergency department experience was just a short few days. She helped admit a pa female patient with neck and shoulder pain and nausea. The physician evaluating the patient certainly looked her over, checked her out, didn't see anything particularly in need of immediate treatment and was getting ready to discharge her back to a primary care specialist. But this student remembered something special. She remembered a lecture and her readings from two semesters before in an earlier nursing class. And in that, in that class, they describe the differences between how men and women experience heart attacks. The student pushed a little bit on the ER nurse and the doctor, 
and said she thought it might be possible that this patient they were evaluating could be in the middle of having a myocardial infarction. They talked it over and they decided to run some cardiac enzymes and they also did an electrocardiogram. And indeed, lo and behold, this woman was beginning to have a heart attack. Had that nursing student not stepped forward when she did and said what she did, the, the outcome might have been different. And the physician was very appreciative of the student and said, basically, he thought that she might have saved her life by what she'd done. So these four examples point out the value of teamwork and collaboration. One person has lots of things to offer. A room full of people have more. So it becomes a challenge then taking all the strengths we have together, sorting through, and then deciding a course of action going forward from there. But generally speaking, working together works out, works to be the best for all of us. Okay, so these are team partners. You have to imagine these are team partners. Um, and they're also doing some collaboration. Um, these actually are pugs and two of them belong to us. We were able to pick two pugs out of this basket and take them home once. So they, they lasted, they were wonderful companions for a long time. But these examples, the four examples I just read also point out that the students were beginning to think and act on a professional level, a level higher of practice than they had before. When I graduated from San Diego State School of Nursing, the conventional wisdom is, at the time was it's probably best to go directly to a hospital, to work in that hospital, and to hone your, home, hone your technical skills. Now, that philosophy felt fit well for a lot of students, but not everybody. Some of us veered off course. Myself, I did veer off course, and I went on to graduate school, and I was the only one out of my class that did that with that timing. Other people went back later, but I decided that's what I needed to do. Um, but in classes, what I noticed is we didn't have a lot of time to discuss the different practice settings that were possible to consider in nursing. So today I wanna to show you a couple of slides of practice settings and we'll see if any of them look interesting to you. Let's take a time, take a minute to, to look at them. There are two slides. As you can tell, many of them would require advanced degrees. Okay, so some of these are not starting right off, off the block and coming out of this program, but some of them are. And I just wanted you to see the, the breadth, the different kinds of nursing that's available. And this is not an all-inclusive list. Okay, did you have a chance to scan it? Look at them all? Okay. On a personal note, I wanna tell you about an experience I had between my junior and senior year. Um, it was probably the most fun experience I've had in nursing throughout my career. Um, as a junior, I was accepted into a program that was called COSTEP. It stood for Commissioned Officer Student Extern Program. And it was a program under the auspices of the US Public Health Service. And we had no idea. There were, at the, at the year I applied, there were 30 students across the country who were accepted into the program. 30 nurses and physicians. And I don't know the breakdown between those disciplines in that 30, but there were only 30 of us. We had no idea where we were going to be posted. We had no idea what kind of nursing we were going to do, but that was part of the adventure. And we thought this was really fun. And so my posting was in a small farming community in the Southern part of New Jersey. And my job was to bring healthcare screening and healthcare programs 
to migrant workers. And literally, I would go out on the farms, in the fields, and talk to the, the migrants who were working, as well as in the evening, I'd come back and we'd have more programs and healthcare clinics then. I found during the day, the oldest of the old and the youngest of the young stayed in shacks, shacks that were um, away from the, the fields, but they also needed care. So I would make visits to some of those people as well. So I, I would bring this up to you only to say that the COSTEP program and the US Public Health Service is still actively recruiting nurses, nursing students. This COSTEP program was for people who are still enrolled in nursing and not finishing yet. The next year I applied again, and that time I was uh, sent to Seattle to work in a acute care facility and had a wonderful experience in, in that um, uh, time. Now their, their goal is to get people who will sign up on a permanent basis to come into the public health service. It is a uniform service. It's not a military service, but their whole focus is on health. And you'll find them working in migrant health and in uh, Native American lands in many places all over the country that you may not even know about. Again, COSTEP. Okay, I have one last point to make, and this is rather tongue in cheek. You see what this man is doing? He's using duct tape to piece together two parts of what looks like an airplane engine, right? Okay. I bring it up because one of my best friends has been a community health nurse for 30 years, and she never leaves home without duct tape. She says it's a staple and that in many ways, she's been able to use it. And I've got a couple roles for people here. And if you don't want to roll, just pass it to a neighbor. That's fine. There's an art to using duct tape. And so we're laughing about it now. And I laugh about it every time I talk to this a colleague of mine, but she says it's been invaluable. And so I just leave you with that, that thought. I wish you well in the semesters ahead. If you want a little extra help, improving your communication skills, how you interact with patients, how you interact with each other, how you interact with staff. I run what I call the listening post. And that's just a place in my office where you can make an appointment, come in and sit down and we chat. And we chat about how things are going in general, but specifically what I'm best at is helping you figure out new ways to communicate that might be more effective. And so I invite you to come anytime you'd like. You can call the School of Nursing office and they can put you in touch with me. Um, I think you've already heard from Lorraine Freitas about what she offers as a specialty. I think probably your, um, your faculty has shared that with you. But my very final word, final, final, keep your heading to true north. Press ahead. Be persistent. Study hard. And you'll do fine. Congratulations on today. Thank you so much, Dr. Heineken, for all that you do and your support of the School of Nursing, our students and faculty. Uh, do feel free uh, to, uh, if you need someone just uh, to listen to your experience at clinical or in school, she's got a very open and, and compassionate demeanor and uh, uh, I'm so grateful for everything that you do for us and, and still stay connected with the School of Nursing. Next, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Michael Gates um, to provide a greeting on behalf of uh, the Honor Society of Nursing 
And also he will moderate, um, give us this little greetings and also moderate the uh, student oath and your white coat, white coating. Dr. Gates. I'm too tall. Okay. All right. So on behalf of the Gamma Gamma chapter of Sigma Theta Tau, the International Honor Society of Nursing, I would like to say good morning to all faculty, friends that are on Zoom, family in attendance also on Zoom, and to you, the students. Um, and welcome for you guys to the profession of nursing. I want to talk a little bit about Sigma Theta Tau because when you guys are seniors, you'll have the opportunity to join Sigma Theta Tau. So what is Sigma Theta Tau? It's the National Honor Society for Nursing. Its mission is to support the learning, knowledge, and professional development of nurses committed to making a difference in health worldwide. Its vision is to create a global community of nurses who lead in using knowledge, scholarship, service, and learning to improve the health of the world's people. Membership is by invitation to all baccalaureate students who meet certain criteria and also graduate students who demonstrate excellence in scholarship and to nurse leaders exhibiting exceptional achievements in nursing. So like I said before, you'll have the opportunity to join during your senior year. And our induction this year will be November 15th. So we take a step back and we start thinking about what today means. So the hallmark of any profession is the privilege of self-regulation. So we as nurses are trusted by the society we serve to set standards for our nursing practice. And we wanna make sure that we have our patient's health and well-being at the forefront of that. But with this privilege comes an obligation for each of us to meet and maintain those self-established standards and to continually compare the state of our own practice to them. A primary source of these professional standards is the American Nurses Association scope and standards of practice. And I'm gonna highlight a few of these standards and share with you the role that Sigma Theta Tau plays in helping nurses around the world meet standards of our profession. In hopes that, that you are, if you are extended an invitation for membership in a couple of years, you'll have a sense of what Sigma Theta Tau has to offer you for your professional development. I'm going to skip over standards one through six. You'll have all you will ever wanted of assessment, diagnosis, planning, implementation, and evaluation soon enough in your clinical courses. But standard eight states... The registered nurse attains knowledge and competency that reflects current nursing practice. So you're not gonna be in school forever, though it may feel like it right now. And upon graduation, you will assume responsibility for your own continuing competency in nursing practice. The Virginia Henderson International Nursing Library is a result of Sigma Theta Tau's commitment to making available on a global scale the latest in nursing knowledge. Sigma also offers programs and competencies that are often overlooked, like how to manage your career in nursing as you move between roles and areas of practice. And the cool thing is, is Sigma Theta Tau has chapters across the world. So wherever you go, wherever it may lead you, there'll be a chapter there to help you. Standard 10 speaks to collegiality stating that the registered nurse interacts with and contributes to the profession, the professional development of peers and colleagues. Sigma contributes to the professional development of peers and achieves this through its scholarly programs, conferences, scholarships, and grants. We have a very close relationship with the student, our, our own student, student nurses organization here on campus. Just the other day on Thursday, we held an entry into practice um, sort of alumni um, panel of students that have, that have just recently graduated and gotten new jobs. 
and in nursing and they shared their experiences and we taped that presentation and it's going to be available to all of the students that are nearing graduation to help them along the way. So overall, if you feel a, sense, a certain gravity to the decision you're making to join the profession of nursing, that's a really good thing. It may mean that you are getting a sense of the obligations that come along with your choice. It is my sincere hope that at some time in your career, whether it is as a student or later as a community leader, you will become a member of Sigma Theta Tau and engage in what we have to offer you and what you have to offer our profession. You are always welcome. Like I just mentioned, we are gonna be holding tons of different um, services in terms of presentations throughout your time in the School of Nursing. And as a student, you're welcome to join in in any of those events, regardless of your membership. So I'd like to close by sharing a poem with you that I think captures the essence of nursing. It was written by Pilar de la Cruz Reyes in 2008, but it's still timely today. She was one of the California's Excellence in Nursing awardees that year. And her poem is called, You Are There. From the time of my first breath to when I take my last, you are there. When I am at my worst, in discomfort and pain, you are there. 24 hours a day, you are at my side, providing care and saving lives. Each day you use, find critical skills to care for others and to help them get well. You touch people's lives in so many ways. You provide excellent care during very long days. Whether at the bedside, the boardroom, classroom or office, it's all about the patient, for that is your passion. You smile and presence, your smile and presence, your gentle touch can be all that is needed for it helps so much. You are the eyes and ears of the doctor when he or she is not here. You take time to explain things and help calm my fears. You are there when it matters. You help soothe, soothe my thirst. You are caring and competent, for you are my nurse. An angel from heaven sent just for me, an angel with heart, and one I can see. How grateful we are for all of your care. How lucky we are that you are there. So take that with you and remember that anytime you have any interaction with a patient. So now, We are going to move on to our oath. So what I'd like the students to do is you can stand and, and read this oath of professionalism along with me. It's up on the board. Yeah. Go ahead. So we begin. I acknowledge that there exists a need to build and reinforce a professional identity founded on integrity, ethical behavior, and honor. I understand that to practice nursing as a student is an agreement to uphold the trust that faculty and society have placed in me. These statements of this oath of professionalism provide guidance for my personal and professional development to achieve this goal, I will provide competent health care and families in an efficient, compassionate, and professional manner. To strive to achieve and maintain an optimal level of personal health, communicate in a truthful, timely, and therapeutic manner, take appropriate action to ensure the safety of clients, self, and others, Collaborate with faculty and clinical staff to ensure that the highest quality of client care is provided. Advocate for all clients. Maintain client confidentiality. Respect others and promote an environment that human self-determination and cultural and spiritual diversity. Uphold San Diego State University's School of Nursing policies and regulations related to academic integrity 
actively demonstrate the highest level of nursing practice based on moral and ethical principles, accept responsibility for my actions, promote excellence in nursing by encouraging lifelong learning and professional development. As students in nursing, I believe that this personal and professional development begins with my commitment to the SDSE School of Nursing Oath of Professionalism. So you now can don your white coats and congratulations. And now we will have each student come up, sign the oath of professionalism and take home with them several of the gifts that Sigma Theta Tau has given in the School of Nursing with the pen and the pins that we are given. So. And I'm sorry if I butcher names, but Sophie Alberg. Lindsay Algeyer. Samantha Andrade. Stephanie Ankawijaya. Caitlin Arona. Is that right? Arjona? Sorry, Arjona. Alvin Au. Gerardo Bag also. Brianna Faith Benola. So Joni, so jo, Joanny Grace Byron. Jolie Bain Chess. Sarah Bello. <laughs> Cody Brown. Jonathan Cabalas. Jacqueline Caulfield. Angela. Calaville, Cavilla, Cavilla. Katrina Chang. Tracy Chung.
Brian Chio. Hannah Chow. Kyle Chung. Gardenia Kobian. Jason Cole. Caitlin Corpuz. Genevieve Kunanen. <laughs> Hannah Danielson. Ranla Delmar. Sometimes I look at the phonetic stuff and I start, my brain starts to freeze. Um, <clears throat> Kirsten Dario. Isabella Davis. Elisa Del Phila. Del Fipi. No. You can say it. Di Filippi. Okay. Julianne Diaz. Kendall Eat Eaton. Maria Factora. Alexandra Ferrari. Amber Fletcher. Celine Fung. Lucas Garcia. Pooja George. Michelle Marie Hernadi.
Ashley Jin Jinquiti. Nina Isabel Go. Alexis Gobel. Amanda Gonzalez. Tyler Gore. Zachary Grove. Madeline Guerra. Johan Gutierrez. Super hard one here. Philip Hall. Taylor Henry. Sarah Herman. Charlotte Hong. Rachel Huan. Hua, sorry. Audrey Huddle. Conrad Ignacio. Okay, Charlotte M. Gloria M. Joshua Jasso. Julius Caesar Jimenez. Sarah Johansson. Jesse Jung. (laughs) 
Madeline Kyer Lieber. Kean Kelly. Minseo Kim. Christina Kleiss. Emily Kornev. Connor Koza. Matthew Kwan. Kieran Lackey. Amy Laxon. Alexandra Lamora. Is it, is it Maya or Mia? Mia Lang. Katie Lau. Whitney Lay. Fion Lee. Lauren Lee. Ryan Lee. Yuna Lee. Francesca Leonardi. Yeah. Armando Leva. Ralph Maxina. Ryan Maxino. Jimmy Manikong. Tony Muthai.
Christian Mayer. Marcus McClure. Tristan Medina. Marissa Mendez. Kevin Leon, Leon Magote. Ava Mosier. Antonio Musaco. Christopher Ng. Kevin Nui. Brittany Nguyen. Ha Nguyen. Kingston Nguyen. Richard Nguyen. Viet Nguyen. Game y'all Ortigo Ortigoza Okay. Arako O O I said it right. Orugian. <laughs> Lindsay Otto. <laughs> Angeline Pugio. Daisy Painter. Yeah. Hannah Park. Emily Pease. P. 
Peter Pham. <laughs> Stephanie Pratt. <laughs> Catherine Reap. Frederick Reto. Jillian Richards. Christina Rivero. Arunsa Robles. Isabella Rodriguez. Via Rodriguez. Christina Roy. Jerome Salvador. Savannah Shelberg. <laughs> Cheryl Shin. Anna Sigwa. Janelle Singson. Abigail Slater. Anna Paula Solar Borgard. Quincy Strasilla. Sarah Street. Madison Tamuelu. <laughs> Gloria Tan. <laughs> Natalie Tarantino.
Aliana Tejidor. Emily Tennant. Mateo Thompson. Elizabeth Thurber. Negan To. Kevin Torres. Brian Tran. Nathan Tran. Eric Truss. <laughs> Natasha Tubig. Zach Vandegrift. Gabriel Velasco. <laughs> Delaney Wagoner. Jessica Wang. Alex Wigdale. Haley Wilhelm. Jennifer Wing. Brandon Wong. Zasha Zuniga. Okay, nursing students, please stand up so we can applaud these amazing accomplishments that you have come so far so far. Please be seated. In 
closing, after 41 years of a nursing career and five nursing degrees, and I don't recommend going that route, I would like to offer a few words of wisdom as you embark on this, new, on this journey. Each of you will feel the emotional toll of our profession and make sure you care for yourselves and each other. Your overall well being, physically and mentally, contributes to your ability to gracefully give that lending hand, supporting voice, reassuring smile, and occasional or often tear to those you are entrusted to care for. You have been given an incredible gift and blessing of caring for people in their most vulnerable times of living and dying. The education you receive will guide you to care for others with grace, skill, knowledge, and compassion. I promise you this blessing and connectedness to the human spirit will, re be, will be returned to you tenfold in making a difference in somebody's life every single day, not only at work, but in everyday life. As you know by now, nurses are never off duty. This new way of being is incredibly powerful and rewarding at the same time. I am here, and I know each of you also are here today because of family, friends, mentors, colleagues, faculty members, all who have inspired you to advance your education someone who truly believed in you. And I want you to take this opportunity, this very special day to thank them, whoever they might be. You have relied on these support systems to get you to this point in your pursuit of their nursing career. But to all the families and friends out there on Zoom, don't think it's over. They will need you in these very long shifts, tough days, and share with you the joys and struggles of nursing school. Be gentle to each other, speak up and have a voice because what you have to say is important. Think innovatively, challenge the status quo, be curious and lead by example. Lastly, nourish your calling with a commitment to lifelong learning and commit to your studies. If you don't know something, please ask, whether it be in the classroom or in the clinical sites. Soon enough, you will all go in different directions, but the bonds you form here now at San Diego State will be forever. The foundation of your education is in each other and this institution and the faculty that help you and guide you through that process. I still remember my nursing professors when I was 19 years old. They are all here for you. Reach out to them. We want you to. Nurses are growing in numbers throughout the nation. We are on the front lines. Patients will put their trust in you and you will continually strive for advocating for excellence in promoting health and preventing disease in all settings and communities to reduce health disparities, embracing a shared humanity. All of you are going into a healthcare system that none of us nurses have ever known after a pandemic. The tools that you have are going to help those current nurses that are on the front lines who are waiting for you to enter into the nursing profession. Always remember, as Florence Nightingale said, nursing is an art. And if it's made to be an art, it requires an exclusive devotion, as hard as a preparation as any painter's or sculptor's work. For what is having to do with a dead canvas or dead marble compared to, have to living, having to do with the living body, the temple of God's spirit? It's one of the fine arts. And I almost said, it's the finest of fine arts. Nursing students, it's with an immense and deep heartfelt joy. And I share the joy of all the faculty, retired faculty and your family and friends that I welcome you into the nursing profession. 
I want to thank Dom and Rusty and all the students and faculty, Dr. Gates, Dr. Heineken, Dr. Cullum for making this happen and all the faculty who attended and for all of you on Zoom, in the Zoom world, uh, we are here to celebrate these amazing nurses entering the profession. There's a significant nursing shortage to hit us very soon and you'll be able to find the job of your choice uh, as soon as you finish school. I congratulate you and honor you within that new nursing profession. It's great to see everyone. That will conclude our ceremony. And uh, thank you to the, all of those who um, joined us uh, on Zoom. We will have a recording um, of this also. Uh, I'm sure Dom and Rusty will make sure it's available to all the students. <laughs>